you know, something that would really help to cement this as an historical event. After all, someone this significant must have been buried with some real pomp and circumstance. Okay, if there is a historical Moses, where is this guy? I mean, where where was he buried? It reminds me of a cairn, or um, in the other words, an artificial um, stone mound covering a tomb underneath. Welcome to our channel. Today, we're delving into one of the great mysteries of religious history, the final resting place of Moses. This iconic leader guided the Israelites out of Egyptian bondage and toward the Promised Land. While his remarkable journey and profound teachings are well documented, one question remains unanswered. Where is Moses buried? This enduring mystery has intrigued scholars, theologians, and believers for millennia. Join us as we explore the fascinating clues and theories surrounding the location of Moses' ultimate resting place. We are Jesus' eternal aura. In today's video, you will have appropriate answers to all the questions above. Before you know what happened, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and click the bell icon for all the latest updates. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Recently, Joe Rogan has revealed an astonishing truth about Moses' tomb that is set to captivate the entire world. What exactly is the secret behind Moses' tomb, and why is it leaving everyone in awe? The last days of Moses are portrayed in the Bible with profound emotion and sorrow. As a leader who had guided the Israelites for decades, the narrative of Moses' final moments is deeply touching. These events, primarily recorded in the book of Deuteronomy, capture the intersection of Moses' personal journey and the broader destiny of the Israelites. They depict a leader who is acutely aware that his mission is nearing its end and is determined to use this time to impart wisdom, blessings, and a vision for the future. Moses was aware that he would not be able to enter the Promised Land as he stood on its threshold. This might seem counterintuitive given that Moses had devoted his entire life to leading the Israelites to this land of milk and honey. However, due to previous transgressions, specifically striking the rock at Meribah rather than speaking to it as God had commanded, he was warned that he would not be allowed to enter the land he had long desired for his people. Moses accepted this divine decree and spent his final days teaching the Israelites important lessons. The book of Deuteronomy meticulously records his speeches, recitations of the law, blessings, and prophecies. Moses emphasized the importance of allegiance to God's covenant, the dangers of defying divine mandates, and the potential blessings of faithful obedience. His farewell to the Israelites was more than just a restatement of the law, it was a heartfelt expression of his deep concern for their future. Understanding human nature, Moses persistently warned them about the temptations they might face in the Promised Land. He cautioned them against forgetfulness and the risk of prosperity leading to a decline in faith. He urged them to remember their history, the miracles they had witnessed, and their covenant with the Almighty. In addition to his teachings and warnings, Moses took the time to individually bless the twelve tribes of Israel. These blessings, similar to Jacob's blessings to his sons, were both prophetic and aspirational, highlighting the unique traits and destinies of each tribe. They served as a final testament to Moses' profound understanding of and care for the diverse groups within the Israelite community. As his time approached, God instructed Moses to ascend Mount Nebo, from where he could view the Promised Land. This would be the closest Moses would come to the land he had long dreamt of. On this mountain, God provided Moses with a panoramic view of the land, stretching from Gilead to Dan and reaching the Western Sea, the Negev, and the Valley of Jericho. This vision was not just a physical sight, but a spiritual confirmation of God's promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The book of Deuteronomy, the fifth and final book of the Torah, serves as a cornerstone of the Hebrew Bible. It encapsulates Moses' teachings, his reiterations of the laws given at Sinai, 
and his fervent addresses to the Israelites as they prepare to enter the Promised Land. Notably, Deuteronomy 34 bears the solemn weight of recounting the last moments of Moses' life and his burial by God's hand. Deuteronomy 34 begins with Moses ascending from the plains of Moab to the peak of Mount Nebo, also known as Pisgah, following God's command. This mountaintop experience is unique. From this vantage point, the Lord reveals the vast expanse of the Promised Land to Moses, delineating its boundaries from Gilead to Dan and from Naphtali to Ephraim and Manasseh. The view extends over the land of Judah to the Western Sea, the Negev, the Valley of Jericho, the City of Palm Trees, and as far as Zoar. This panoramic vision is not merely geographical, but deeply symbolic, representing the fulfillment of God's promise. God had pledged to Abraham that his descendants would inherit this land, and now, as Moses gazes upon it, God reaffirms this promise to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In a moment tinged with melancholy, God informs Moses that while he can see the land from afar, he will not enter it. Reflecting on the poignancy of this moment is essential. Moses, who had confronted Pharaoh, led the Israelites through the Red Sea, received the Ten Commandments, and guided a frequently rebellious people through the wilderness for 40 years, would not set foot in the land of promise. The reasons for this, detailed earlier in the Torah, stem from a lapse in trust and obedience at Meribah, where Moses struck a rock to produce water instead of speaking to it as commanded by God. Consequently, Moses was decreed to only see the promised land, but never to enter it. Deuteronomy 34 then provides a brief yet profound account of Moses' death. Verses 5 and 6 state, So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord, and he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab opposite Beth Peor. But no one knows his grave to this day. The nature of Moses' passing is unparalleled in the biblical record. The scripture explicitly emphasizes that it was God himself who buried Moses, and the location of his grave remains a mystery. The chapter does not dwell on the mourning or reactions of the Israelites to their leader's passing. Instead, it swiftly extols Moses' virtues, declaring that there has never been a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. This phrase encapsulates the unique relationship Moses shared with God, a relationship marked by direct communication, profound trust, and divine revelation. The theological significance of Moses' obscured burial and the absence of a known gravesite has been a subject of deep reflection. The mystery surrounding his tomb has fueled numerous speculations and theories. Some believe that the concealment of Moses' burial place was intended to prevent it from becoming a site of idolatry, ensuring that the focus remained on God's covenant rather than on the physical remains of a revered leader. Others see it as a symbol of the transition from the leadership of Moses to Joshua, emphasizing that the ultimate guide and leader of the Israelites was God himself. In light of recent revelations, the world is now abuzz with intrigue and fascination about the true nature of Moses' tomb. As more information comes to light, the legacy of Moses continues to inspire and captivate the hearts and minds of people around the globe. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the Israelites whom the Egyptians are enslaving, and I've remembered my covenant. Over the centuries, the unique circumstances of Moses' passing have starkly contrasted with the typical death narratives of other biblical figures. The mystery surrounding his final resting place has led to numerous interpretations, each offering insights into broader theological themes and teachings. One significant interpretation suggests that the hidden location of Moses' grave acts as a divine safeguard against potential idolatry. Given Moses' immense influence, leadership, and the miracles he performed, there was a real risk that the Israelites or future generations might venerate his burial site. Such veneration could detract from the central tenet of monotheistic worship, 
shifting reverence from God to Moses. By keeping Moses' gravesite a secret, God ensured that Moses' memory would be honored without crossing into undue veneration or worship. Another perspective focuses on Moses' unparalleled relationship with God. The fact that God himself buried Moses highlights the depth and uniqueness of their bond. This personal act by the divine underscores the narrative that Moses was more than just a prophet. He was a friend of God. His burial by God can be seen as the highest honor, a final act of divine intimacy reserved for someone who communicated with God face to face. The absence of a known gravesite further emphasizes the transcendent nature of Moses' relationship with the divine, placing it beyond human comprehension or ritual. Theological interpretations also explore the symbolism of Moses viewing the promised land without entering it. For some scholars, this represents the inherent incompleteness of the human condition a reminder that even the greatest prophets remain imperfect in their earthly journey. Moses' view from Mount Nebo serves as a metaphor for humanity's perpetual striving toward divine promises, always visible but never fully attained. This perspective adds a layer of humility to Moses' legacy, portraying him as a model of devout service coupled with the acknowledgement of human limitations. In the broader context of salvation history, Moses' mysterious death acts as a bridge between two significant epochs, the Exodus and the conquest of Canaan. While Moses symbolizes the liberation from Egypt and the journey through the wilderness, Joshua represents the fulfillment of the promise, leading the Israelites into the promised land. Moses' hidden burial marks the end of one era and the beginning of a new chapter of divine fulfillment. Theologically, this transition underscores the continuum of God's plan, where individual roles, regardless of their significance, are woven into a larger divine narrative. The ongoing mystery surrounding the location of Moses' final resting place has naturally captivated historians, archaeologists, and biblical enthusiasts. The intersection of religious significance and historical curiosity has led to numerous attempts to discover concrete evidence of Moses' burial site. Despite the passion and dedication behind these efforts, the quest remains unresolved, leaving the enigma intact. From a historical perspective, the lack of contemporary records outside of biblical accounts complicates the verification of Moses' life events, especially the details of his burial. The Torah, while a fundamental religious text, is not always considered a primary historical source in the conventional sense. Its narratives, rich with theological and moral teachings, often lack the detailed geographical or temporal markers that historians and archaeologists seek. In this context, Pinpointing the exact location of Mount Nebo, where Moses is believed to have died, presents a significant challenge. Although there is a traditionally recognized site in present-day Jordan venerated as Mount Nebo, definitive archaeological evidence linking this site to Moses has yet to be found. Numerous excavations and surveys in this region have not yielded tangible evidence directly associated with Moses. Another complicating factor is the protective stance of many religious communities regarding potential excavation sites. Locations believed to hold spiritual significance are often shielded from extensive archaeological exploration. This protective ethos, grounded in reverence and the desire to preserve sanctity, can limit the scope and depth of archaeological investigations. Additionally, the vast expanse of the region described in biblical accounts poses a daunting challenge. The area Moses traversed with the Israelites encompasses diverse terrains and landscapes, each presenting its own set of archaeological difficulties. Shifting sands, erosion, and millennia of human settlements further complicate the search for a site that has remained hidden for so long. The quest for Moses' burial site has been approached with a combination of scientific rigor and spiritual zeal. However, it's important to recognize that many of these efforts have been influenced by personal beliefs and preconceptions. Over the centuries, 
Various explorers have claimed to find clues or markers indicating the proximity to Moses' grave. Yet, these claims, often based on anecdotal evidence or tenuous historical connections, have not withstood rigorous scholarly scrutiny. In the New Testament, the episode of the Transfiguration stands out as a mysterious and spiritually charged event within the narrative of Jesus' life and ministry. This moment not only highlights Jesus' significance within the Christian faith, but also reintroduces two monumental figures from Hebrew scriptures, Moses and Elijah. Their unexpected appearance alongside Jesus invites a deeper exploration of the intertwining of their legacies and the theological implications within the scene. The Transfiguration is detailed in the Synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It describes Jesus ascending a high mountain with three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John. Upon reaching the summit, a dramatic transformation occurs. Jesus' face shines like the sun, and his clothes become dazzling white. Suddenly, Moses and Elijah appear beside him, engaged in conversation. Peter, witnessing this surreal scene, offers to erect three tents, one each for Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. Before any action can be taken, a luminous cloud envelops them, and a voice from the cloud proclaims, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. This profound event underscores the continuity of God's plan and the fulfillment of the law and the prophets through Jesus. Moses and Elijah, representing the law and the prophets respectively, appear to endorse Jesus as the culmination of their teachings and prophecies. The transfiguration thus serves as a divine affirmation of Jesus' identity and mission, bridging the Old and New Testaments in a powerful and visually striking manner. During the Transfiguration, God identified Jesus as his beloved son, urging the disciples to listen to him. As the cloud dissipated, Jesus stood alone and instructed the disciples to keep the experience secret until after his resurrection. This episode is rich with symbolic meaning. Moses, representing the law, and Elijah, representing the prophets, are foundational figures in Hebrew tradition. Their presence with Jesus underscores his role as the fulfillment of both the law and the prophets, bridging the Mosaic legal tradition and the prophetic messages with the new covenant he was establishing. Moses' presence is particularly significant, given the mystery surrounding his death and God's direct involvement in his burial. Moses' reappearance during the Transfiguration can be interpreted in several ways. One view sees it as a confirmation of Moses' eternal life and his ascension to a divine realm after death instead of a conventional afterlife. Due to his unique relationship with God, Moses might have been granted a special place in the heavenly realms, enabling his return during this pivotal event. Elijah's presence adds another layer to this interpretation. Unlike Moses, whose mysterious death is documented in scriptures, Elijah's departure is described as an ascent to heaven in a whirlwind aboard a chariot of fire. The parallel between Moses and Elijah, both experiencing extraordinary departures from life, amplifies the significance of their joint appearance. It suggests that both prophets, in their unique ways, transcended the conventional boundaries of life and death, achieving a closer proximity to the divine. Moses is widely renowned as one of Israel's greatest prophets. What were his key messages to ancient Israel, and what prophecies of Moses remain relevant for us today? Moses is famous for his role in leading the children of Israel out of slavery in Egypt in the 15th century BC. He is also credited with writing the first five books of the Bible. An editor later penned an insightful overview of this acclaimed prophet's ministry at the conclusion of Moses' fifth book. But since then, there has not arisen in Israel a prophet like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face in all the signs and wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt, before Pharaoh, 
before all his servants and in all his land, and by all that mighty power and all the great terror which Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. Deuteronomy 34, 10 to 12. The life of Moses can be divided into three 40-year periods. His first 40 years were spent in Egypt, the next 40 years in Midian, and his last 40 years were spent serving as a prophet of God. Acts 7.30, Exodus 7.7, 7, Deuteronomy 34.7. This article will focus primarily on his role as a prophet. Despite some modern interpretations suggesting that Moses had personal aspirations for leadership, the scriptures do not support these suppositions. After fleeing Egypt as a fugitive for having killed an Egyptian, Exodus 2.15, Moses came to Midian, where he met Ruel and his seven daughters. The scriptural record tells us, Then Moses was content to live with the man, and he gave Zipporah his daughter to Moses. Verse 21. Several decades passed until the king of Egypt died. During that time, the servitude of the Israelites became even more burdensome, so they groaned and cried out because of their bondage. Verse 23. Hearing the cry of the Israelites, God then appeared to Moses in a burning bush and appointed him to serve as his messenger and liberate his people. Exodus 3, 1-6. After explaining that he had heard the Israelites' cries and seen their oppression, God said to Moses, Come now therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Verse 10. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? Verse 11. Instead of immediately accepting the opportunity, Moses tried to decline this call from God. God told Moses that he would help him, and also told Moses what words to use in explaining to the children of Israel, the elders of Israel, and the king of Egypt what God was orchestrating. In response to Moses' fear that people would not believe that God had appeared to him, Exodus 4.1, God gave Moses three miraculous signs. Changing a rod into a snake and then back into a rod, making his hand leprous, and then healthy once again, and turning water into blood. Moses could use these three signs to demonstrate that God was working through him. Verses 2-9 to nine. Still not convinced, Moses told God, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. Verse 10 even though God told Moses, Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. Verse 12. Moses was still reluctant to accept God's call. Moses responded, O oh my Lord, please send by the hand of whomever else you may send. Verse 13. Moses' continued reluctance angered God, yet God countered this worry by allowing Moses' brother Aaron to serve as his spokesman verses 14 to 16. This account of Moses' calling is consistent with how God operates. He chooses those he wishes to serve as his prophets, despite their initial reluctance. Moses' story is a testament to God's ability to use even the most hesitant individuals for his divine purposes. Moses is a central figure in the history of Israel, revered as a prophet, leader, and lawgiver. His journey from reluctance to serve as God's chosen messenger to becoming one of the most significant figures in biblical history is a testament to his growing relationship with God. By the end of his life, Moses had fully embraced his role, earning high praise from God himself. This deep bond between Moses and God is vividly illustrated in the episode where Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman he had married. God's response to their criticism highlights Moses' unique standing with him. In Numbers 12, 6, 8, God reveals his assessment of Moses, stating, If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. 
Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. I speak with him face to face, even plainly, and not in dark sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? This passage underscores the exceptional nature of Moses' relationship with God, setting the stage for his roles as a leader, lawgiver, and prophet. Moses is widely recognized for his leadership role in the Exodus, where he led the Israelites out of Egyptian bondage. This story, detailed from Exodus 4 through Exodus 12, recounts the miraculous events that demonstrated God's power and validated Moses as his chosen prophet. Through Moses and Aaron, God performed numerous miracles, culminating in the ten plagues that ultimately convinced Pharaoh to release the Israelites. However, it is crucial to understand that while Moses was the visible leader, it was God who delivered the Israelites from slavery. Moses and Aaron were merely the spokespeople through whom God communicated his will. As recorded in Exodus 5.1, Moses and Aaron told Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. This statement emphasizes that the power and authority behind the deliverance of Israel were entirely God's. After the Israelites were freed, Moses continued to act under God's guidance. When he recounted the events to his father-in-law Jethro, he emphasized that it was the Lord who had delivered Israel, saying, All that the Lord had done to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, all the hardship that had come upon them on the way, and how the Lord had delivered them, Exodus 18.8. Moses' leadership was marked by his unwavering faith in God and his consistent acknowledgement that it was God, not himself, who was the true deliverer of Israel. Moses is often referred to as the great lawgiver of the Old Testament, but it is essential to recognize that God was the actual lawgiver. Moses served as God's messenger, faithfully conveying his laws to the people of Israel. The most famous instance of this is when the Israelites gathered at the base of Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments. The account in Exodus 21-2 begins with the words, And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. The dramatic scene of thunder, lightning, trumpet sounds, and a smoking mountain as God delivered his commandments left the people in awe and fear. They were so overwhelmed by the experience that they pleaded with Moses, You speak with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. Exodus 20:19. God honored their request, and from that point forward, he communicated his additional laws and instructions through Moses. This included not only the Ten Commandments, but also the statutes and judgments that would govern the life of the Israelite community. Moses faithfully relayed these divine instructions, ensuring that the people understood that the laws they were to follow came directly from God. Even after Moses' death, God continued to guide his people through prophets, further underscoring that the true source of the law was always God himself. One of the most significant prophecies given through Moses was the promise of a future prophet who would be like him. In Deuteronomy 18.15, Moses told the Israelites, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your midst, from your brethren. Him you shall hear. This prophecy pointed to a future figure who would carry God's authority in a manner similar to Moses. God further emphasized the importance of this future prophet, stating in Deuteronomy 18.19, And it shall be that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. This prophecy was fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. During the transfiguration, God spoke to Peter, James, and John, declaring, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. Matthew 17.5 Jesus himself affirmed that he was the fulfillment of Moses' prophecy when he told the Jews, You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life and these are they which testify of me. John 5, 39. He further stated, Do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. 
There is one who accuses you, Moses, in whom you trust. For if you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. John 5, 45, 47. The people of the first century recognized Jesus as the prophet Moses had foretold. After Jesus miraculously fed a multitude with only five barley loaves and two small fish, the people exclaimed, this is truly the prophet who is to come into the world, John 6, 14. This acknowledgement continued after Jesus spoke about the Holy Spirit on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, further confirming his role as the promised prophet, John 7, 37, 44. Following his crucifixion and resurrection, the apostles, particularly Peter, testified that Jesus was indeed the fulfillment of the prophecy given by Moses. Peter's message on the day of Pentecost included a direct reference to this prophecy, Acts 3, 26 Blessings and Cursings Moses also delivered a profound prophecy known as the Blessings and Cursings, found in Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28. These passages outline the consequences of Israel's obedience or disobedience to God's laws. God promised blessings for obedience, including prosperity, peace, and divine protection. Conversely, he warned of severe curses for disobedience, such as famine, defeat by enemies, and exile. History records that Israel suffered many of these curses when they strayed from God's commands, as predicted by Moses. The scattering of the Israelites among the nations is one such fulfillment of these prophecies, Deuteronomy 28, 49-51, 64, Leviticus 26 to 33. Despite these severe warnings, God also promised that he would not utterly destroy the Israelites even if they turned away from him. Leviticus 26, 44 assures that God's covenant with Israel would endure and many see the modern state of Israel as a fulfillment of this promise. However, it is important to note that the current state of Israel represents only one of the 12 tribes specifically the tribe of Judah. Christians today live under the New Covenant, which offers a broader spiritual promise, but the lessons of obedience and disobedience from Moses' prophecies remain relevant. In summary, Moses' life and ministry as a prophet, leader, and lawgiver were marked by his close relationship with God and his faithful service in delivering God's messages to Israel. His prophecies, especially those concerning the coming of Christ and the blessings and cursings, continue to resonate throughout biblical history and into the present day. Moses' legacy is one of obedience, faith, and unwavering dedication to the will of God. As of 2024, the global landscape seems to echo the ancient echoes of the book of Revelation. Is it mere coincidence or are we indeed witnessing the unfolding of foretold events? The book of Revelation, often regarded as a roadmap to the end times, weaves a tapestry of apocalyptic visions and profound messages. In the recent global events, there's a palpable sense that the pages of this ancient biblical prophecy are turning right before our eyes. As we scrutinize the events of 2024, questions arise. Do they align with the mysterious predictions hidden within this age-old scripture? What secrets lie beneath the surface, waiting to be unearthed in the cryptic verses of this enigmatic text? Join us on a journey as we delve into these profound mysteries and seek answers to these questions. Overview of the Book of Revelation The Book of Revelation, the final installment of the New Testament, holds a unique place in Christian scripture. Penned by the Apostle John during his exile on the island of Patmos, it serves as a profound and symbolic account of apocalyptic visions that unveil the culmination of human history. To grasp the significance of the unfolding events in 2024, one must first understand the prophetic nature of Revelation and its relevance to our present time. Revelation 1, 1, 3 sets the stage for this monumental work, proclaiming the revelation of Jesus Christ imparted by God to his servant John. This divine communication, facilitated by an angelic messenger, underscores its urgency and immediacy. The language used, such as must soon take place and the time is near, emphasizes the imminence of the events foretold. It serves as a reminder that the prophecies outlined in Revelation are not distant or irrelevant, but hold profound relevance for believers throughout history, including those living in 2024. 
Structured as a series of visions, Revelation unveils different aspects of the future, incorporating symbols such as the seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls, each revealing divine judgments and cosmic events. Revelation 6, 1, 2 vividly depicts the opening of the first seal, symbolizing conquest with the emergence of a rider on a white horse. These symbols, when juxtaposed with global events, provide a framework for interpreting the signs of the times. In the complex landscape of 2024, certain global events remarkably align with the prophetic warnings outlined in the Book of Revelation. Geopolitical tensions have surged to unprecedented levels, echoing biblical warnings of wars and rumors of wars. Conflicts and geopolitical strife dominate headlines, with nations vying for resources and power. Additionally, the frequency and intensity of natural disasters align with biblical prophecies, signaling a world in distress. Societal shifts further contribute to the unfolding drama, reflecting the moral decay and societal breakdown foretold in Revelation. Instances of violence, immorality, and ethical erosion are on the rise, painting a bleak picture of humanity's moral decline. Yet, amidst the chaos, there is a call to discernment to view these events through the lens of biblical prophecy. The book of Revelation warns of a moral decay and societal breakdown evident in Revelation 9.21, where it states, Nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. The moral fabric of society appears to be unraveling with increasing incidents of violence, immorality, and a growing disregard for ethical principles. While it is crucial not to succumb to fear, understanding these events in the context of biblical prophecy allows for a discerning perspective. The scriptures serve as a timeless guide, offering insight into the significance of these tumultuous times and urging believers to remain steadfast in faith. Technological advancements also warrant consideration in the context of Revelation's prophetic narrative. The concept of the mark of the beast, mentioned in Revelation 13:16-17 raises questions about the rapid pace of technological innovation in our modern world. As society embraces biometric identification and surveillance, it is worth pondering the implications of these advancements in light of biblical prophecy. In conclusion, the book of Revelation offers a profound and timely message for humanity, particularly in the tumultuous landscape of 2024. Its prophetic insights provide invaluable guidance and perspective, reminding us of the ultimate triumph of good over evil and the sovereignty of God over human history. As we navigate the complexities of our world, may we heed the warnings and promises of Revelation, anchoring our hope in the eternal truths it unveils. Signs of the Times in 2024 In the intricate tapestry of human history, the Book of Revelation stands as a beacon, guiding us through the twists and turns of time. Authored by the Apostle John during his exile on the island of Patmos, it serves as a profound and symbolic account of apocalyptic visions, offering insight into the culmination of human existence. As we find ourselves navigating the complexities of the year 2024, there's a growing sense that the signs foretold within its pages are becoming increasingly apparent, unfolding right before our eyes in this modern era. One of the most intriguing aspects of Revelation is its prophetic passages, particularly those concerning the mark of the beast found in Revelation 13, 16, 17. This passage describes a scenario where all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, are compelled to receive a mark on their right hand or forehead in order to engage in buying or selling. In today's context, this prophecy resonates deeply with the advancements in technology and the emergence of digital identifiers. Indeed, the modern world bears witness to the ascendancy of biometrics, digital identification, and cashless transactions, all of which embody the digital landscape we inhabit today. The parallels between the biblical passage and contemporary technological trends are striking, prompting us to ponder the intersection of spirituality and technology in our ever-evolving world. Biometric technology, encompassing features like fingerprint and facial recognition, is rapidly gaining prevalence in the realm of security and identification. The convergence between modern biometric identifiers and the biblical passage in Revelation 13:16 adds a layer of intrigue to the adoption of these technologies. The scripture mentions a mark on the right hand or forehead, a location remarkably akin to the common placement of biometric markers. This alignment prompts contemplation on the potential implications and societal shifts as biometrics become more integral to daily life. Looking forward, 
The continued integration of biometric technology may prompt discussions about privacy, ethics, and potential unintended consequences in the quest for enhanced security and identification methods. As these advancements unfold, society may grapple with the balance between technological progress and the implications outlined in ancient texts. Similarly, the increasing prominence of digital currencies is fundamentally transforming the landscape of our financial systems. In this era, cryptocurrencies and electronic transactions are swiftly becoming the standard, prompting discussions about the potential implications of a decentralized financial paradigm. Revelation 1317 speaks of a mark without which individuals are unable to engage in buying or selling, evoking a profound parallel with the concept of a global digital currency. The idea of a singular mark governing economic transactions resonates with the current trend towards a universal digital currency, sparking contemplation about the potential societal and economic shifts in our interconnected world. Moreover, the internet and social media platforms have created an interconnected world where information can be disseminated globally in an instant. Revelation 13. 7 talks about the authority given to a figure to make war with the saints and overcome them, indicating a level of control and influence that transcends geographical boundaries. In today's digitally connected world, leaders can indeed exert influence on a global scale through technology. In contemplating these parallels, one cannot easily dismiss the notion that there may be a deeper significance to the events unfolding on the world stage. As we navigate the complexities of our time, may we heed the wisdom of the ages and remain vigilant, seeking to discern the signs of the times and find meaning in the midst of uncertainty. The Rise of Global Governance and Charismatic Leaders the resonance between unfolding events and ancient biblical prophecies, particularly articulated in Revelation 13, is both compelling and thought-provoking. The scriptures depict a vision of a beast rising from the sea adorned with blasphemous names and wielding immense authority. The detailed imagery of blasphemous names and symbolic heads aligns remarkably with contemporary political tumults and the rise of charismatic leaders, echoing the prophetic narrative with an uncanny resemblance. In contemplating the state of the world in 2024, one cannot help but notice a striking convergence between contemporary realities and age-old biblical foresight. Notably, a development aligning with biblical predictions is the growing wave of political instability across nations. In Revelation 13, 2. The imagery of a beast resembling a leopard with feet like those of a bear and a mouth like that of a lion symbolizes a turbulent political environment. Indeed, in 2024, we witnessed nations grappling with unrest, civil strife, and power struggles, mirroring the prophetic imagery of a world in upheaval. Furthermore, the emergence of charismatic and influential figures on the global stage mirrors the anticipated arrival of a significant world leader, as foretold in biblical prophecy. Drawing a parallel to Revelation 13, 3 which depicts a beast with a seemingly fatal wound that miraculously heals, the contemporary world witnesses the rise of leaders who, despite initial setbacks, capture the imagination of people worldwide. These charismatic figures command attention and admiration on a grand scale, akin to the prophesied leader. The geopolitical dynamics of our time also align with biblical prophecies concerning a leader who commands global authority. Revelation 13 7 depicts this leader having authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. The current trend toward global governance, international alliances, and the concentration of power in the hands of a few resonates eerily with the scriptural forecast. The interconnectedness of nations and the pursuit of a unified world order reflect the prophesied consolidation of authority in Revelation. 13. 7. Examining the present through the lens of Revelation. 13. 5. 7. We find a clear depiction of a time when authority is given to a figure to act for a specified period. The temporal nature of this authority raises questions about the transient nature of current power structures and their alignment with biblical prophecy. In summary, the echoes of Revelation resonate with the chaos unfolding on the global stage in 2024, prompting profound contemplation about the potential roles these individuals might play in the ongoing narrative of our time. The enduring relevance of ancient scriptures in interpreting our present reality is evident, emphasizing the need to heed the wisdom they offer as we navigate the complexities of our world. Encouragement and Call to Faith In the midst of tumultuous times, finding solace in the timeless wisdom of scripture becomes essential. 
Within the pages of the Bible, we encounter profound passages that not only acknowledge the trials of the world, but also provide a source of strength and hope. Consider Revelation 3.10, where believers are encouraged to persevere and remain steadfast in their faith amidst trials, with the promise of protection for those who hold on to the teachings of Christ with patience and endurance. Similarly, Matthew 24, 13 echoes this sentiment by reminding us that enduring faith secures our salvation, even in the face of challenges. It encourages us to face the tribulations of the world with unwavering determination, knowing that our ultimate deliverance awaits those who remain steadfast. Amidst disconcerting signs of the times, Luke 21, 25, 28 emphasizes the prophetic nature of events, urging believers to stand firm and lift their heads in anticipation of redemption. This passage poetically describes cosmic disturbances and earthly distress as precursors to redemption, instilling a sense of imminent hope and divine purpose amidst chaos. Revelation 13.10 offers a reassuring perspective on enduring faith in the face of harsh realities, emphasizing the importance of perseverance and unwavering commitment to Christ. In conclusion, the book of Revelation provides a lens through which we can interpret the current state of the world echoing warnings and predictions laid out in Scripture. The passages shared in this discourse offer not only an acknowledgement of trials, but also a resilient message of endurance, faith, and the promise of protection for those who remain steadfast. This convergence of current events with biblical prophecy is not a cause for despair, but a clarion call to faith, reminding us of timeless truths that guide us through uncertainty with resilience and unwavering commitment. As we conclude our exploration of the profound insights found within the book of Revelation, may we carry with us the enduring wisdom and hope it offers. In a world filled with uncertainty and turmoil, the scriptures serve as a beacon of light, guiding us through the darkest of times. Let us hold fast to the promises of protection, salvation, and redemption, knowing that our faith will sustain us through every trial. As we navigate the complexities of our era, may we find strength in our unwavering commitment to the teachings of Christ and lift our heads in anticipation of the fulfillment of God's divine plan. Let us journey forward with resilience, faith, and an abiding trust in the timeless truths that have stood the test of time. Millions in Syria and Iraq are facing water shortages as the region's longest river, the Euphrates, dries up. As you can see, the Euphrates River is suddenly drying up. Surprisingly, a series of strange phenomena were recorded by people when approaching it. Sounds like angry screams were heard from inside. It really caused fear in everyone. Here is the video that captured that scary sound. Not stopping there, the water level lowered to reveal things below the bottom of the river that truly terrified everyone. Scientists and explorers also discovered a cave that had never been recorded in history. But what they found caused even more confusion. What they had done was leave behind something that was so stupendous. It was so strange and scary that they closed the river immediately. So what is hidden in that cave? Where did that scream come from? Watch till the end to find all the answer for these questions. If you like our video, don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps us a lot. Before answering the above question, remember that both appeared after the river suddenly disappeared. What does the drying up of the Euphrates River mean? As you know, this river is one of the longest and most historically influential rivers in Western Asia. This river is one of the longest and most historically influential rivers in Western Asia. But the real reason it is of so much interest today is that it is mentioned countless times in every book of the Bible. All consider this river as an extremely sacred and important place for all humans and the world. But people just consider it a legend and not true. Through recent events, those things are becoming more real than ever. Biblical scholars have presented various interpretations of passages in the Bible that mention the drying up of the Euphrates River. Some view it symbolically, suggesting it signifies the decline and fall of the once powerful Babylonian Empire, which eventually lost its dominance. Others interpret it as a harbinger of the end times, signaling Jesus' return to judge the world and separate the righteous from the wicked. In this latter interpretation, the drying up of the Euphrates is seen as a precursor to the unleashing of dark forces upon the world, possibly linked to the gathering of armies by the Antichrist to invade Israel. This scenario suggests that the dry riverbed of the Euphrates could facilitate the movement of armies across the river to attack Israel. 
The timing of these events remains uncertain, but contemplating the drying of the Euphrates during the end times serves as a solemn reminder of God's control over history. He will bring judgment upon the world for its sins, while also providing protection for His people. The interpretation and debate surrounding the biblical meaning of the Euphrates drying up is evident. However, what remains unequivocal is its symbolic representation of spiritual aridity, which can afflict those who distance themselves from God. The solution to this spiritual desolation lies in cultivating a relationship with God, who is referred to as living water in numerous scriptures. Scriptures such as John 4.14 4, and John 7.37, 38 underscore Jesus' invitation to quench spiritual thirst and receive eternal life through Him. In my book, Wake Up to Wonder, I delve into the symbolism of water, including the powerful imagery of the Euphrates, as emblematic of God's life-giving presence and renewal. Contemplating the drying of a river like the Euphrates serves as a poignant reminder of our need to remain connected to God's living water to avoid spiritual desiccation. What is hidden in that cave? Below the river is a hidden path leading to a place that seems to have been built a long time ago. Go down by stairs that are still intact today. There are many different opinions. Some believe that the river water above is preserving this relic in the past. But the strange thing is that inside there are tools that look like they were crafted according to the habits of many centuries ago. Everything was neat and tidy, and it seemed like someone used it often. It's terrifying, isn't it? Therefore, this is most likely the prison of fallen angels. This is stated very clearly in the Bible, in Revelation 9.13, 21. The sixth angel sounded his trumpet, and I heard a voice coming from the four horns of the golden altar that is before God. It said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. The number of the mounted troops was twice 10,000 times 10,000. I heard their number. The horses and riders I saw in my vision looked like this. Their breastplates were fiery red, dark blue, and yellow as sulfur. The heads of the horses resembled the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur. A third of mankind was killed by the three plagues of fire, smoke, and sulfur that came out of their mouths. The power of the horses was in their mouths and in their tails, for their tails were like snakes, having heads with which they inflict injury. Continue in Revelation 16.12. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. In 50 BCE, a remarkable feat of engineering marked the annals of history in Babylon, the construction of a tunnel attributed to Queen Semiramis. This subterranean passage, nestled in the low grounds of Babylon, held a pivotal purpose, to provide Queen Semiramis with a clandestine route away from the river's flow, connecting her palaces without the necessity of traversing the Euphrates directly. The grandeur of Queen Simi's endeavor is vividly depicted in historical accounts. She orchestrated the excavation of a tunnel, employing the toil of countless workers. With meticulous precision, the tunnel's walls were erected, fashioned from robust bricks, and fortified with layers of cement and brimstone, rendering it impervious to the ravages of time. The architectural marvel spanned a considerable length, its expanse extending beneath the river's bed. Arches, crafted from sturdy brickwork and enveloped in bituminous plaster, formed a secure passage, ensuring both stability and concealment. Such an ambitious undertaking demanded relentless dedication, culminating in the completion of this subterranean marvel within a span of 260 days. Upon its fruition, the river, diverted from its natural course, flowed anew, while Queen Semiramis could traverse her domain discreetly, unfettered by the river's barrier. Phil Estratos, in his account within The Life of Apollonia of Tiana, further embellishes the narrative, attributing the construction of this tunnel not to Queen Semiramis, but rather to Queen Media. Regardless of the attribution, the tunnel's existence transcends individual accolades, solidifying its status as a testament to ancient ingenuity. Yet amidst the echoes of history, whispers of a more ominous nature emerge, Tales abound of spine-chilling sounds resonating from the depths beneath Babylon's surface. Eerie manifestations believed by some to herald the unleashing of four fallen angels, portending cataclysmic events foretold in apocalyptic prophecies. The juxtaposition of ancient engineering prowess with eschatological forebodings prompts contemplation. 
Are these mere coincidences or do they signify a deeper cosmic significance? Such speculations evoke fear and trepidation, conjuring visions of impending doom. However, amidst the shadow of impending darkness, a beacon of hope emerges, the promise of redemption and deliverance. Christian doctrine espouses the triumph of good over evil with Christ's sacrificial victory heralding an era of salvation. The scriptures affirm Christ's dominion over all principalities and powers, assuring believers of ultimate triumph over the forces of darkness. In the tapestry of eschatological narratives, the drying of the Euphrates assumes symbolic significance, foretelling a climactic confrontation between divine and malevolent forces. As the river's waters recede, paving the way for apocalyptic armies to converge, the stage is set for a final reckoning. A cosmic battle between light and darkness, righteousness and wickedness. Amidst the chaos of impending tribulation, faith serves as an anchor, offering solace amidst the storm. The promise of Christ's imminent return instills hope, transcending mortal fears and uncertainties. In the face of impending judgment, believers find reassurance in the immutable promise of eternal life, secured through faith in the redemptive power of Christ. Thus, as the ancient waters of the Euphrates ebb, heralding the dawn of eschatological fulfillment, let faith illuminate the path forward, guiding believers through the tumultuous currents of history towards the promised shores of eternal salvation. The Origin of the Euphrates River When delving into the scriptures and their interconnections, a profound understanding of biblical narratives emerges, leading us back to the genesis of our theological comprehension. In the tapestry of divine revelation, the Euphrates River assumes a pivotal role, its significance echoing from the dawn of creation to the annals of human history. The biblical chronicles unveil the Euphrates as one of the rivers cradling the Garden of Eden, the pristine abode fashioned by the hand of God for humanity's habitation. In the genesis of existence, the celestial oasis flourished, nourished by the life-giving waters coursing through its midst, eventually branching into the Pishon, Gihon, Tigris, and Euphrates. Speculations abound regarding the geographical location of Eden, with scholars positing regions spanning from Turkey and the Caucasus to the vicinity of the Persian Gulf, where these rivers find their confluence in modern times. Amidst the nebulous mists of antiquity, the Euphrates meanders, an enduring testament to the sacred geography of biblical lore. As the narrative unfolds, the divine spotlight shifts to Abraham, anointed as the progenitor of a chosen lineage. Residing in the ancient city of Ur, nestled along the shores of the Euphrates, Abraham's journey epitomizes divine providence amidst the ebb and flow of human history. While the modern landscape may obscure the once maritime splendor of Ur, archaeological vestiges stand testament to its illustrious past, now enshrined within the heartland of modern Iraq. Genesis chronicles Abraham's exodus from his ancestral homeland, guided by the divine promise of a land flowing with milk and honey the verdant plains of Israel. This epical migration, fraught with trials and triumphs, heralded the dawn of a covenantal legacy, embraced by both Jewish and Arab descendants as the patrimony of their shared ancestry. There are any other reasons why the Euphrates River is drying up? There's been a lot of talk lately about the Euphrates River and how it's been slowly disappearing. There has been significant concern surrounding the gradual disappearance of the Euphrates River, prompting extensive investigation by scientists and experts into its causes. One proposed reason is the impact of climate change, which has resulted in decreased rainfall and increased evaporation in the region, thereby contributing to the river's diminishing water levels. Additionally, the construction of dams upstream has disrupted the natural flow of water, further exacerbating the river's depletion. Human activities such as excessive water usage for agriculture and industry have also played a role in reducing the river's water levels. The consequences of the Euphrates River's Vanishing Act are profound, affecting both the environment and local communities. The loss of this crucial water source has led to decreased agricultural productivity, impacting the livelihoods of farmers and communities reliant on the river for irrigation. Furthermore, the decline in water levels has disrupted the delicate ecosystem of the region, endangering plant and animal species that rely on the river for sustenance. Additionally, the disappearance of the Euphrates River has cultural and historical significance, severing the connection between present-day communities and their ancient roots. Despite ongoing efforts to understand the reasons behind the river's disappearance, including the exploration of mysterious caves in the area, the mystery remains unresolved. It is imperative that we prioritize the preservation 
and sustainable management of our natural resources to ensure their availability for future generations. In conclusion, as we navigate the intricate tapestry of biblical narratives and historical epics, the Euphrates River stands as a steadfast witness to the enduring interplay between divine providence and human agency. From its mythical origins in the Garden of Eden to its pivotal role in the saga of Abraham, the Euphrates weaves a narrative thread that spans the epics of creation, guiding humanity along the path of faith and redemption. As we contemplate its meandering course through the annals of time, may we find solace in the timeless truths it unveils, forging a deeper connection to our shared heritage and the transcendent promises it holds. If you enjoy this video, please give us a like and subscribe. Your support will be our motivation. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell to update the latest video from our channel Hope. To see you in the next videos, goodbye and God bless you.